Hey, morning everybody, it's Corey here. Uh, while I'm one-armed, as you can see, um, I thought maybe we'd take a stab at, at this telly that I have. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a Squire. Someone's put a Fender Telecaster logo on it, but, but I'm pretty confident it's actually a Squire. Um, but what's happening is when I plug into the jack, uh, I get some crackles, some pop, like it's not making a good connection. So what we're going to do is, I uh, thought today we'd just yank the jack out, take a look at the solder connections on it, and then probably yank this plate and take a look at how the pickups and everything are connected, see if there's any little minor improvements we can make that will give us a, a better sound in the end. So let's see what we've got here. This will be four, four Phillips screws. We'll start popping these things. Got a few things we might work on today, but I think I'm going to separate them into different videos. Aside from this guitar, I have a Rocktron Big Crush compressor pedal uh, that I think the sustainer pot is going out in. So for that, we're going to have to look for a... Uh, I'm going to have to stand this up. For that, we may have to look through a device or two I have here and see if we can't find a good replacement pot. Uh, if not, we'll run down to my parts store and see what we can find. A lot of times it's a hit or miss. Trying to find the exact pot can be tricky, so because there are literally thousands and thousands of different potentiometers out there, so what you wind up doing is finding something that's close uh, and you may wind up giving it a little more range on its sustain, or maybe even a little less if you're not lucky. So we're going to get this plate off real fast here. Almost got it. Last screw. It's tricky with one hand. Pull this thing out here, see if we're far enough down you can see. You see the jack? Um, actually, the connections on the jack look pretty solid, which leads me to believe the problem's going to be in this plate. So let's take the plate off. Hopefully, we can just pull the plate out and see what we need to see without having to take the pots off and everything. It's just easier this way. Remember to only take these two screws out. You don't have to dismount the, the switch or anything like that. All right, let's pull this puppy out. Let's see what we got. Oh, holy mama. Oh, that is, that is gnarly looking, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna say this is where the real problem is right here. There is a, it's just barely touching on the, on the ground side of the, on the ground side of the uh, jack wire. So what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and fire up soldering iron. There's some other places we're gonna touch while we're in here. Some of these look really cold soldered on the switch. We can make those a lot better connected, I believe. Clean this, I'm gonna take this piece of heat shrink off as well. Assuming I can find, a, figure out where my exacto knife is. I've usually got it right here. And it seems to have run away. Let's see if we can feel how loose that is. We'll just clip the uh, end of that heat shrink and tear it off. As if it's not already hard enough to do with one hand. We'll just make the whole job strange. There we go. Raise blade. Let's get that out. 
that's a good start. This is not the smartest way to do this, but it's what I have handy, so it's what I'm doing. I'm sure there's plenty of reasons why not to, not the least of which is slicing your finger. Um, yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna tighten up a few spots here, and it's gonna be a pretty easy fix which is what I like to see. So we're gonna turn our soldering iron on. For doing this pot, I'm gonna crank it up a little bit though. Uh, pots are kind of hard to heat. Um, and in order to get, you really need a good melt on it. So we're gonna heat it up just a little extra. I'm gonna get some flux here on my brush. Get it over here. Cause where that ground wire is, is really, really is really, it's just barely touching. And here we've got a random loose wire just sticking out. I don't even know what that is. It looks like wire connected from over there, like it, I don't know. It seems to all be working without it, so I'm hesitant to, I don't wanna cut it short, screw up. All right, so iron's heated up to, oh, shoot, I'm going to turn the iron off. It's got my little tip in it. A couple weeks ago, we were working on a pedal and put a little teeny tiny tip in it. <sighs> Let's check this guitar out a little bit. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, these are, um, I know they're Les Paul humbuckers. But I can't remember. I think they're 498s, but I could be wrong. Um, but but the guitar is fun to play. It's a beater. Stuck a Question Authority sticker on it just for the fun of it, because I've never had a guitar with a sticker on it. Oh, yeah. What the hell is going on in there? I can do better than that. That's for sure. Still hot. Oh, but yeah, I had, I've only had this, well, I've had this maybe three years. Um, I use it as bench guitar because I got it for next to nothing. Like, like I think I paid a hundred dollars for it three years ago or something like that. I'd never owned a telly at that time. And I saw this and I thought, you know what? That'd be a fun project. Uh, and truth is I haven't done a whole lot to it. Um, I aged some of this metal work, and, and the truth is, at that point in time, I wasn't doing pretty much anything electronically, so probably I should have noticed this and handled it then, obviously, but that's all right, because we're going to get it taken care of today. Most of it, about half of it looks well flowed, but, but a lot of this on top of this pot right here, uh, which you probably can't see at all. You know, is really cold soldered. Um, and the spots that are hot over here aren't connected to anything. This is particularly troubling on the jack. I can make this jack do much, much, much better. So we're gonna fix that. Over here is the one that troubles me though, where this black lead is coming in right there. That is just, it's just almost not connected. So I'm thinking that's where most of our crackle's coming from. So we're going to get into that and really uh, clean that up, make it make it work a little better. And I think that that there alone will get rid of our crack. Looks like someone installed a 473k 100 volt capacitor uh, from ground to center tap on the pot here. Let's see if we're, yeah, now we're cool enough. Let's see if we can touch the, no, but we can get a pair of pliers and get it apart. Do, 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 do. 
put them uh, there's my exact should have known they'd be right here by so all my pliers are upstairs at the moment and just to avoid touching this you don't want to squeeze hard with these you will destroy it just lightly unscrew it. doesn't even have to be that tight when you put it back on here's the tip we want so we're going to take that tip slide it right over and that'll be fine and we're going to grab the rags on on something all right then we're going to grab the little sheath here slide it back over and very carefully tighten it up it's hotter than you would normally want to do this so again do what i say not what i do like i tell the kids all right that's tight enough now we can kick the soldering station back on and get down to business i'm not a fan of these saddles they just feel cheap and they don't like to sit right all right soldering iron be heated up in about 30 seconds and then we're going to get started just a touch more flux here just to be sure we got it good kind of go over some spots I know I'm gonna hit again that way we can get in and out of here quick and smoothly that looks shitty here needs some serious work and that's why we've got it set hot right now because that's a lot of solder just dumped on there A little dab over here. Here doesn't look great. Here looks even less great. I think that's about it. Everything else looks pretty well sweated. Okay, so we'll take this out, clean it off a bit. There we go. Get a little fresh, fresh goods there. Grab some solder. Where? Oh shit! We're gonna just lay the soldering iron here to the edge of the pot, in hopes of heating that and the wire back up, and building up just a little more of a good connection there. Yeah, that's much better. That's not going anywhere. We're going to do the same thing right here because it's just a little thin right there too. That's good. Clean it off a bit. Grip some flux. Now we come over to this problem child. This spot looks awful. Start over here on the edge. It's good. Oh, there we go. Now we got some good connections. It needs to be. It needs. Oop. Move the wire. That's all right. We got it. We'll move that back over just a little. All right. So we're going to have to hold that one. That one's being a little finicky. There we go. It's a good connection. All right, come around here. Next little problem spot. These won't take long at all. Truth is, all of these look just a little cold, so we're going to 
Just touch each of them for a second. Make sure they're good and solid. There we go. They've all got that really hazy look that tells me it may not have been heated up well enough to begin with. So uh, Usually you don't want to overdo the solder, but in this weird little situation here, I'm, I am adding just a dash, just to be on the safe side. Now getting this one good. Yeah, that's much better connection. Get this tab here, and I think that'll be the last one. Yep. Let's see. Anything else we want to hit while we're in here? Because this is the time. I'm just kind of touching these to reflow them a little. Sometimes there can be a, a little crack or a bubble in your solder uh, and it doesn't take much to create a headache so the idea is oh these are so nasty over here even still i'm gonna after we do this i'm gonna i'm gonna hit it with my cleaner because it just it, it's gross it shouldn't look like that Okay. Need to get a fan down here. So we're gonna we're gonna shoot this because the top of this pot is just nasty. And this does a good job of eating up residual flux and things like that. The other one looks nice and clean, but this one's this one's been kind of hot. Also, while we've got it apart, I'm going to, as we flip it back over, I'm worried about this loose wire here. I mean, it's just a ground, but because it's sticking out all over the place, I'm afraid it's gonna hit something. So for the time being, we're just gonna tuck that over where I know it's out of the way. Uh, somebody left some tape on there too. All right, just lay this in. Actually, no. We're going to real quick, while we've got this part, shoot. I use this, this CRC uh, Cutie Electronics Cleaner. You can get it at O'Reilly's for about seven, eight bucks a can. And for pretty much everything, it does great. I just want to shoot inside these pots once while I've got it apart and make sure we're clean and doing good. both of those good and get them turned. I'm also going to shoot in that jack once too because I think that helps. Guitar electronics are all about good connection and there's so many things that can change the quality of your connection on a guitar. So what we do is just make darn sure that everything's able to do its job and do it right. Okay, so I got this one. We're gonna put that back down. Slide these screws back in before we deal with the jack over there. And everything on the jack looked looked good, thankfully. So, like, I'm not even gonna touch those up. That's how good it looked. So, that's a little different than than what we've had so far. sucker screwed down with my one arm not even my good arm it's one bad arm that's what I've got okay so now we'll turn this up where I can see a little better and start weaseling in these little bitty screws oops First one, get this opposite corner in, just started, doesn't have to be perfect. 
will be once I get the screwdriver out, but figure to start with, this is good. What's the deal here? Okay, there we go. Oh, little screw is hard to hang on to, especially with my dumb hand. As I like to call it, my wrong hand. Okay, there we go. That's three of them started. This fourth one started. Let me tilt this up where I can see just a little better. I'm working on getting a setup for a second camera down here while I'm doing this because I realize right this minute you can't see much. But I figure if you're watching this video, you obviously know how to drive a screw already. So for this one little part, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. All right. Get it tightened down now. We're almost there. And then we're going to plug this bad boy up and see if it crackles or if it's clean. If it crackles, uh, we may have to change a thing or two, but that's okay. I have an extra jack, but I don't think the jack itself is the problem. Um, that, the truth is, that volume pot in there, I wouldn't be shocked at all if it's burnt up. Okay. Well, give me just a minute here. I'm going to get this sucker uh, hooked up, and we'll see how she sounds. All right, guys. So we got the telly back together, just tuned it up real quick, and I've hooked it into the little box uh, MV50 that I always run through down here on my workbench, this little dude. Um, so let's see how she sounds, see if we've made any improvements. Uh, please bear with me, can't hold a pick very well. If I do, I have to be way out there and it's just not worth it. Plus, I'm trying to be gentle with it because I gotta go get it checked out again soon. Let's see if we can wiggle that cable and get it to crack. That's good. Uh, used to, man, if you breathed wrong, this cable, this would crackle through here. Wow, it's so weird trying to do anything with this. All right. All right. Well, it looks like we've got another one down, the Question Authority Telly here. Uh, it's a fun little guitar to play with. It's, it's pretty beat up. Some of that, I think, was intentional. Um, but overall, plays good, and it's a, it's a fun guitar. Uh, I usually keep it down here. It's kind of kind of serves like my little amp. It's sort of my workbench guitar. Um, but we got that jack fixed. Uh, if you ever run into that, that's such an easy fix if you can solder it all. The key, though, to soldering in a guitar is, uh, is learning to balance the need for higher temperatures with the importance of not burning things up. You can, in a big hurry, melt the insulation right off your wire or melt the parts inside of a potentiometer. So you want to just really make sure to walk that fine line. It's not that hard. It's, it's totally doable. Use flux. I use this. Let me grab it here and I'll show you. This is what I use. You can pick it up at Lowe's. You can get it on Amazon, anywhere you want. And uh, it works well for me. I've also recently switched to lead-free solder. And frankly, it's the cheap solder that came with my Yiwa uh, soldering station. So, uh, and I'm pretty happy with it, which surprises me because I've always gone ahead and used the leaded stuff. Uh, but this seems to be working well, and it's probably what I'm going to use moving forward. If there's anything else, I'm going to put some affiliate links in here uh, as well to the soldering station I use and to each of the products I use when I'm doing this kind of work. That way, if you guys are interested in getting into this or doing a little work on your own guitars, um, if, if interested, you can use the same equipment I am. 
uh, and plus the channel gets a small kickback from that so it'll help help keep it possible for us to be making these videos and having fun so thanks for watching please give us a little thumbs up subscribe if you don't mind and we'll see you next time